Okay, folks, so first off, uh, let's get some hands in the air. I want to know one thing that you see about this particular relationship. One thing you know just by looking at the table. I don't care what it is. Tell me something you know. It could be that the ink is black. I don't care. Oscar, what do you think? How do you know a partial what? You're so close. Nicely done. Partial variation. How do you know that? Does not start at the origin. What tells him that it doesn't start at the origin? He's absolutely correct. But remember, whenever you put a solution down, you want to pretend that I have no idea what you're talking about. Megan. Awesome. So always look at that x equals zero. And if that value in the y column is not zero, we are dealing with a partial. What if that was a zero? What if I went like this? What if that was zero? What would that make it now? What would that make it? Hassan? Awesome. Direct variation. Nicely done. Okay, what's something else you notice here? Adam? Linear. It is linear. How do you know it's linear? Um, because the clocks, you know, it goes up by the same number every time. Awesome. So he can see it goes up by the same number every time. What is it, what's it called if I wanted to show that it goes up by the same number every single time? What would I do? He knows, and I know he's correct. What would I do, Sophia? There's differences, so you subtract 40 Awesome. So there we go. So we could see those first differences. So tomorrow you know you're going to have to do something like that, right? I'm going to ask you about the first differences. We can see that they're constant. That is very important. So this is linear. It's a partial variation. What else? Anything else you could tell me? Want to go a little deeper? Let's talk about the equation first. What's the general equation for a linear relationship? What do you think? Hannah? Awesome. Now, what is M? What is M? Or actually, let's keep it open-ended. Tell me something about that equation that you know. What do you think, Andrew? M is the slope. Awesome. What's another word for slope? Another word for slope. New hand, new hand. Andrew. What's that? Rate of change. Rate of change is one. What's another one? The other one, we don't use it too often, but it could come up. Could come up. Hand again? Constant of variation. Constant of variation. Nicely done. What's one way we can calculate slope? One way we can calculate slope. One way, one way. Any new hands? Any new ones? Any new ones? Jordan? Rise over runs one way. Anyone want to take a chance and tell me what the formula, the ugly formula that no one likes to use and they think it's hard even though it's not hard? What is that formula? Anyone remember? Even if you don't know it exactly. What do you think, Luke? What's that? Awesome. So doing the, and I'm going to write that down over here because it's so important. So if I do that, he said the difference of the dependent variables over the difference of the independent he mentioned. How could I show that using X's and Y's? What would that be the same as? When we talk about the dependent variable, is that X or Y? What do you think, Danielle? Awesome stuff. Okay, now looking at that, everybody see this formula right here? Everyone see it? Okay, I don't care if you use that formula or not, it's there if you want to use it, okay? However, what if I go back to the table, here it is, and I tell you I want to focus on this point and that point to find the slope. What would I do? What would I do? If I want to focus on those two, and actually, you know what I'm going to do to make things even better? Let's pull that out and let's make it as large as possible. So here we go. Whoa, that's not what I want. There we go. Okay, nice and large. Boom. So if I want to focus on these two points, there's one, there's the other point. What would I do to find the slope with those two values? And let's identify them first, okay? Can somebody tell me where, and you know what? Let's go even further. I'm going to call this point one, and I'm going to call this point two. Which, where is X one? What value is X one? If I label the points, point one and point two, remember, it's up to you what you label them as. What do you think, Megan? Where's X one? Uh, awesome. Okay, keeping in mind the subscripts are just identifying the X and Y from that first point. How about X2? Where's X2 going to be? Okay, gentlemen at this group, I'm going to be asking you something shortly, okay? Get ready. 
Yeah. What do you think, Anthony? It's going to be four and uh, like the four and the hundred. Awesome. Now, which one's the X2? Uh, awesome. Good job, Anthony. I like it. How about Y1? What's it going to be there, uh, Eric? Would it be zero and 20? Very close. Keeping in mind, if we're talking about the two points, we're looking at the two highlighted points. Okay, help them out with Y1, then I'll come back to Y2 for them. Hassan? Awesome. So do we see the commonality here, folks, with the subscript 1? They all match up. Okay? So how about Y2? Where's that going to be there, Eric? Awesome. Okay, everybody cool with that? So now if I use that formula to find slope, what is the numerator going to be? What is the rise equal to? What is the rise equal to? What do you think? So remembering it's y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So what's the rise equal to here? What do you think? What's the rise, Jordan? Awesome. So essentially we're doing that difference between those two values. There's my rise. How about my run? What's my run going to be? What's the run going to be, Josh? Awesome. Look at that. Subtract those two guys. So what is my slope then, folks? What is the slope equal to here? If I have rise, I have run. I'm using that formula without even realizing it. What do you think, Oscar? 20. Awesome. So 40 over 2 equals 20. Nicely done. So we know the slope is 20. What's the equation of this line? What is the equation of this line? And if you could do this, guys, you know everything you need to know for tomorrow. You're ready to go. Ready to go. What do you think? Hannah? Y equals 20x plus 20. Awesome. And how do we get this 20 right here in, in particular? Where does this 20 come from right there next to the x? Where does it come from? Megan? The constant. Awesome. Your constant of variation or your slope. And where does the second 20 come from, folks? How about this 20 right there? The initial value. And that guy is right there. Everybody cool with that? So we've got an equation down. We're in good shape. I'm going to bring that equation back to the first page here. All right. I'll put her down. Y equals 20X plus 20. Let's talk about the graph real quick. We're not doing the graph because it's a waste of our time. You guys already know how to graph. Somebody tell me whereabouts or what would this thing look like? Okay, tell me what this would look like. If you were talking on the phone with a friend and you had to describe what this graph would look like, you don't need to be exact. Maybe where it would start. Is it steep? Is it not steep? Is it rising to the right, falling to the right? What do you think, Eric? Uh, it starts if you did one up by 20 on your awesome. axis. It would start at the first point, so 20. And it goes up somewhat steep, so it hits linear. Awesome, I like it. So it's linear. It says it goes up somewhat steep. Would you guys say that maybe this means, would that be somewhat steep? Maybe, could be, right? It all depends on what your scale is, right? However, is it going to be rising to the right or falling to the right? How do you know that, Eric? Um, because it, the value increases per hour. Awesome. So we have got that. What do, we, what do we call that? If we focus on the slope, the slope must be what for it to rise to the right? What does it have to be, Anthony? Positive. Positive. Nicely done. So it's got to be positive. It is positive. So it's rising by $20 every, I don't even know what this is, cost. $20 per one hour, right? So that's our rate of change when we interpret that. Okay, so that graph is going to look something like that. I don't know unless I put a scale on it. However, you guys have been doing graphs all year, so I'm not too worried about it. Who can give me a description? Give me a scenario. Might not be completely accurate. Like if I say it's a, if it's a taxi, it wouldn't really make too much sense, right? An hour in the taxi, maybe in, a, maybe in like a limousine or something, that might make sense. Who's got another example? Hassan? Johnny hires a plumber named Bobby. Bobby charges $20 to arrive at his house. And but for every hour... Awesome. I like that. How many people feel like it? Would that work? Does that make sense? Logical, right? So there's the $20 flat rate increases by 20 every time. You have one, Anthony? Yeah. Um, like a go-kart uh, racetrack uh, charges for every hour you drive. Uh, 
bucks an hour plus a twenty dollar entry fee. Awesome, I love it. So that flat rate right there, as long as time is zero or whatever x is zero, you're gonna have to pay that up front, regardless of how how much you use in terms of time. Okay. Precisely. There you go. Good man, Anthony. I like it. Good job, folks. Any.